Hello, Internet. Even though it may not seem like it, it is possible to create the perfect life that you want to live. And that life may be a lot more attainable than you think, and it may not even be the life that you think right now. I've been working on this for the past five years or so, trying to craft the perfect life for myself. And I think I've gotten to a pretty good place. So I wanted to share my story and then give you the framework that I use to get to this point. So it's going to be four different parts. Think of it like a square. We'll start at the top. We'll do the two sides and then we'll hit the bottom. The first part is something that I say all the time, lifestyle over everything. What do you actually want to be doing on a daily basis? Don't think about your dream life as an achievement or a career or things that you want to have or things that you want to be because a lot of that stuff is not in your control. But what is in your control is what you're doing every day. What are you actually waking up and going through your day doing? Growing up, I always wanted to be a musician of some sort. I wanted to be a famous artist. I wanted to go on tour, play music, play shows and have the the world love me for my music and be able to share that with people in real life. On paper, that sounds great, but I am a homebody. I like to be home. I like to have my space. I like to have my comfort. I don't like being out a lot. I would hate to live my life every day on the road away from my home in order to survive, in order to make money. So yes, on paper, being a musician sounds great, but my actual dream lifestyle is not conducive of that. If you're trying to figure out what you want to do, if you're not 100% percent sure, that's not a problem. All you have to do is think about what do you want to be doing on a daily basis? That is the most important thing because that is your actual life. Everything else is really made up. You know, a label that you give to yourself, a title that you put on yourself for what career you're doing. All of that stuff is made up. What is real is what you do from when you wake up to when you go to sleep. Where do you wake up? Where do you go to sleep? Which people are you around? Are you with your family? Are you with your friends? Are you going to new places often? Are you staying in the same place all the time? All that stuff is so much more important than just some random career that you can throw on yourself and say that you've achieved it. The best way to start figuring this out is assessing what your current life is and what you want to change. I'll use myself as an example again. I used to work 10 hours a day on the road, busting my ass, doing a lot of manual labor type stuff. There was certain parts about that that I liked, you know, staying active because I'm not like a naturally active person. So having to be forced to work out as a job, basically really, really good in some ways, but it wasn't good for my mental health. What is good for my mental health is being able to be home. So now I work from home and there's definitely downsides to working from home too, but I have a lot more say in what I do in my life when I work from home, partially because I don't have to commute. So when I'm done with work, I can just start doing whatever I want to do. God forbid something comes up. It's a lot easier for me to deal with and address. Those are very basic things, but start from what you're currently doing, what your life currently is, and then figure out what parts of it you want to adjust because you may not be as far off as you think. Going back to what I was saying about being a musician. I don't have to worry about music being my job. I don't have to worry about doing a certain thing with my music in order to pay my bills because that would cause me to have less freedom. My job actually gives me freedom with my music that I wouldn't have if music was my job. It's all about perspective. It's all about what you need. All right. So part two, be ready to adapt. This is kind of a continuation of what I was saying about lifestyle, but your dreams might not actually be your dreams. They're called dreams for a reason. There's something that you imagine. I'm not saying that you should give up on your dreams and live a mediocre life. I'm saying, what do you actually want to achieve? What you think your dream is may require more effort than you're willing to give, and it may not be worth it in the end for you. For some people, you may realize that you have to work a lot harder to get to where you want to be than you originally thought. So again, this is going to be different for everybody, but there are so many things in life that you don't have control over, and you have to be ready to work with those things that come up. But there are a lot of things that you do have control over that you can enact in your life or you can take away from your life depending on what you need. So something I've been thinking about a lot lately is what I would call relative reality versus absolute reality. So your relative reality is the things that you have control of. It's the things that are important to you in a moment in the current state that you're in. So I'll give a simple example. Let's say I want to go skateboard outside. My relative reality, I want to go skate. I have a skateboard. I can walk outside. I have fully functional legs and I can go skateboard and I can do it for as long as I want. But the absolute reality is it's raining outside. It's pouring rain. Can I technically go skateboard in the rain? Sure. But a couple of things can happen. First of all, it's a lot easier to get hurt. And if you get hurt, 
hurt, you're not going to be able to skateboard, at least not for a long time, or possibly ever, if you get hurt enough. Two, your skateboard is going to get messed up from the rain. So in the future, when you want to skate, you may not be able to. So again, this is a silly example, but sometimes your relative reality has to be more important. And sometimes the absolute reality has to be more important. They both exist at the same time always. There's never a time where one exists and one doesn't. They both always exist. Sometimes your relative reality can sort of override absolute reality. And then sometimes absolute reality has full control over your relative reality and there's just nothing you can do about it. You have to be able to change your goals if you need to. You have to be okay with not achieving what you thought you need to achieve and be ready to pivot in a way that will benefit you. Now, that doesn't mean you can just give up every time something is hard because again, if you really want something, it's gonna be difficult to achieve. So you're gonna have to put in the work. If you're working really hard, hard on something and your relative reality is telling you this is what you should be doing, but the absolute reality that you are living in is not allowing you to pursue this, then maybe it's time for you to reconsider. Okay. Number three, this is the other side of the square. There's only one you. Now this is obviously a kind of a trite thing to say. It's very generic, but it's true. You can listen to me give you advice. It doesn't really matter what I say because ultimately you are the one who has to do these things. This is something that I learned from being in therapy. If you've watched my channel, you know, I've talked about about therapy a lot. You can go to therapy for years, get tons of help, get tons of information, have access to tons of resources. But if you are not implementing those into your life on your own, it's kind of pointless. In the same way that I'm giving you information that has helped me, you have to be knowledgeable enough of yourself and your own life to apply it to your life in a way that's helpful. The only way you can do this is if you look within yourself and not externally. This is something that I struggle with a lot. I know a lot of people struggle with is looking for external information to determine what your internal self is defined by. Now, I know that was kind of a mouthful. And again, I know it seems kind of hypocritical as I'm making a video, but I'm trying to talk from my own experience and then just give a framework that you can fill in with your own experience. Self-help videos or listen to podcasts, read books, really anything. You can get information from anything. You can watch a movie that inspires you to change your life. You can listen to an album, listen to a song that inspires something in you that you want to do something different. You have to think of things that you are taking in externally as a framework and an inspiration and not something that's concrete that you need to do it to a T because everybody's life is different. Only you know what you need and only you can determine what you need to do to get what you need. This is a very tricky concept for me personally, because I have a weird relationship with my sense of self. A lot of people have issues like this, but I have a really hard time defining myself, which is funny because you could argue that there is no way to really define yourself. There is no self but that's for another video. And I don't know if I'm qualified to speak on that fully. <laughs> what I do know is I've looked externally for answers for a very long time. And it wasn't until I started listening to myself, listening to my intuition, listening to my internal desires that I really figured out the best way for me to live my life. I said desires that maybe I misspoke when I said that because following your desires is not a good path either. If you become a slave to your impulses, you're never going to be happy. That is actually the formula to unhappiness. This is going to take time. You have to really sit with your thoughts and sit with your feelings. Some people like to write them down. That doesn't really work for me. I like to speak. I like to record myself talking because it's like less filtering. Again, this is just for me. I have a hard time writing because I'm filtering as I'm writing. Like my brain, I'm thinking, and then I'm writing down something different maybe than what I'm thinking. But if I'm just speaking and I'm recording myself speaking, I don't have a filter. I'm just, it's just coming right out. So maybe you can record yourself like on your phone and then write it down and kind of figure figure out like stuff from there, but figuring out the actual internal needs that you have is so important to creating the perfect life for you. The fourth part and the bottom of the square, and this is arguably the most important thing, don't lie to yourself. Don't convince yourself of something that is not true. Now this can manifest in many different ways. This can be, let's say you have pressure from your parents to be a doctor. You've lived with that pressure for such a long time that you believe that you should be a doctor. And maybe there are aspects of that path that you like, but going through the school, working in a hospital or whatever, like you really don't want that for yourself. So you're never going to have a perfect, fulfilling, happy life if you're lying to yourself. You can't get around yourself. You can't avoid yourself forever. 
Trust me, I've tried. It always will come back to you, always. Whether it's right away, a day, a week, a month, years, it will always come back to you. The real you will always come back, it'll show itself, and you'll have to make a decision what you wanna do about that. In my opinion, the best way to go about it is to stop lying to yourself. Even if it sounds silly, even if people in your life are telling you that it's silly, it's not worth it, it's not possible, you can't do it, you shouldn't do it. If you, in your heart, believe this this is the path for you don't let anybody tell you otherwise and this isn't like some like everyone's trying to take you down kind of thing no people are gonna do that because they have their own biases that are coming from within them that you don't share with them necessarily so someone might not be purposely trying to take you down or harm you but they don't know what you know about you. Like I said, there's only one you. And the only way you can figure out what that you is and what that you needs is if you are honest with yourself. And like I said, this is the most important part because if you don't have that honesty with yourself, everything else collapses. And that's why I see this as the bottom of the square. Lifestyle over everything is the top of the square because that is where you're trying to get to and the self is what is going to support that lifestyle. So ultimately, lifestyle is what you should be striving to figure out, but before you even get to that point, you gotta figure out yourself first. And again, I know this sounds kind of generic, but sometimes you just need to hear it, you know? Like sometimes you just need that inspiration to figure your shit out. And again, it's gonna take time. You have to be easy with yourself. You have to be adaptable. You have to be willing to work with yourself because if you don't want to work with yourself nobody else is going to want to work with you that's just how it is people pick up on things like that without even fully realizing it you pick up on things like that with other people you know what i mean so why would you be any different in the best way possible you're not special so the things that you analyze on other people that you see as faults are probably things that you are dealing with yourself. And maybe they're not that specifically, but you also have faults that you are trying to push away. A lot of the times that's how it is. So figuring out who you are and what you need is the most important step to figuring out how you can create the perfect life for yourself. Hope you enjoyed the video. Good luck.